Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and many others, bringing you a grand solar minimum. Update, Monday, November 20th, around 8.45 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. Ulawun Volcano in Papua New Guinea, a strong paroxysm episode today with spectacular lava fountains, significant pyroclastic flow, and emissions to 50,000 feet, folks. That is stratospheric. Keep calm. It's boom time. Snowfall analysis over the weekend shows heavy snow for the higher elevations. The snowpack is at a deficit, and we need to start dumping more of the global warming goodness in the West. Dangerous severe weather, including tornadoes to target southern U.S. in the coming days. A strengthening storm fueled by moisture from the Gulf of Mexico will ignite a significant round of severe weather, which will put lives and property in danger. And this is all heading to the busiest travel week of the year, Thanksgiving. Alabama impact day, threat of severe storms, high wind and heavy rain through Tuesday morning. So heads up, Bama. As we move over to the Clarion Ledger, severe weather to cover Mississippi into early morning. Tornadoes confirmed near Canton. And severe storms possible Tuesday also in central North Kakalaki. So heed the warnings as we, let's take a look at the forecast. A storm system to impact the south and the north, the northeast ahead of Thanksgiving. High winds in Southern California. We reported yesterday on the heavy snow coming to New Hampshire and Vermont for the holiday, and we'll get to the snow forecast in just a moment. A storm system will move from the southern plains to the northeast U.S. through Wednesday with severe thunderstorms for the northern Gulf states. Gusty winds and heavy rain for the southeast and a wintry mix for the interior northeast. Strong offshore Santa Ana winds with gusts over 60 miles per hour are forecast into Tuesday morning in Southern California. But it does look like, even though a dry hole is going to remain throughout November here, the first week of December will bring more moisture to Southern California. Good news. Let's take a look at the snowfall forecast as we progress it through here. Here is through Wednesday morning. It looks like there's going to be some heavy snow in British Columbia trying to make its way down into the Pacific Northwest. Some light snow in Colorado as the snow begins to pile up in the Northeast here. Tuesday, Wednesday, and into gobble, gobble day. So heavy accumulations from the snow. Biggest accumulations for the country for Turkey Day, northern Michigan, a little bit of light snow for southern Wisconsin, and the northeast, like a beast, is going to be the big winner, chicken dinner for Gobble Gobble Day. Seismic update. No quakes of note, some increased activity in Hawaii, but overall worldwide, pretty normal activity. And that brings us over to Uluwan Volcano in Papua New Guinea. Strong paroxysm episode today with spectacular lava fountains. Let's take a look at this image here one of the best images i could get showing you the glow the amount of people living here and the power of this explosion now this is coming this shot is from the west as you can see the plume and all that ash dust moving east at about fifty thousand feet now this volcanic eruption could be vei let me see what we got going on here i got a little couple things out of whack there this could be VEI 3 or 4. Potentially, Ulawan typically erupts at VEI 1 or 2 and has been erupting quite often. Take a look at this. A VEI 4 back in 2019 occurred, and another VEI 4, which I saw just moments ago here, happening back in 2000. So VEI 4 is pretty common. It, there is no historical evidence that it erupts any larger than this. But large enough, indeed, the, the eruption was amazing, spectacular, and glorious. Look at the power of Mother Nature. And that brings us over to the Reykjanes Peninsula. New hazard map for Grindavik has been published. Obviously, the biggest danger zone here in the purple, the secondary danger zone in the red, and then orange would be, well, that third zone. Now, the Reckianus volcano update coming 20, within the last 24 hours is bleak. 
Dramatic ground expansion yesterday and magma flux might be 10 times faster. Instruments detected approximately 5 times 5.5 times faster rapid ground deformation than before the strong earthquake on the 10th of November. Therefore, a magma inflow could be 10 times faster than ongoing estimated levels. This means that when and if this volcano blows, it's going to be a big one. Clear evidence of uplift in Spotsengi. Around 700 earthquakes have been detected near the magma intrusion since midnight. That's bad news. In recent days, between 1,500 and 1,800 daily earthquakes have been measured in the region, but this has been dropping, and this is a sign that the eruption may happen at any time. Just like in past eruptions on the peninsula here, uh, when the seismicity dropped to zero, the eruption commenced. And you can see that these earthquakes are all focusing in here, just north of Grindavik, on that area of uplift. Again, our hearts, our thoughts and prayers go out to those that have to evacuate, maybe indefinitely, as they watch their town get destroyed by Mother Nature. Space Weather News Update. Lots of sunspots turning around the limb. And the geomagnetic storm. Look at that. That is the most sunspots we've seen in quite some time. A little bit of activity is heating up here, but just in the sea range, nothing fantastic. And that three-day geomagnetic forecast of... Geomagnetic storm was a fizzle. Barely got to KP2. Who knew? Now you do. You can see here the passage of that CME just about 18 hours ago. Completely miserable. Barely moved telemetry at all. Plasma speed barely moved. Temperature barely moved. Density nothing. Phi angle shifted. The BZ shifted slightly and the magnetometer had a little bit of a pulse. But overall, no geomagnetic storm. Absolutely nothing. Now, is this the weirdest comet ever? Comet 12P Pons Brooks continues to baffle astronomers. And the reason is they still think that comets are made of ice. Even though we've landed on them and we've imaged them and there's certainly no ice there, they're all rock, they continue to believe this fairy tale and write about it. They even, this is a respected astrophysicist here, Tony Phillips, and he says, after the fourth major cryovolcanic eruption, there is nothing cryovolcanic happening on this comet. It's an electric comet. We've known about electric comets for over a decade. They have been explained. They have been theorized. We land on them, and we proved every single aspect of the concept. But the mainstream continues to talk about nonsense. Now, what we can see here in this outburst is a, a clear coma here in green, an electric glow, an intercoma, more glowing. We can see the ion tail here and the dust tail, all as predicted by the electric comet model. Here we can see the coma of gas and dust which may or may not be gas and dust. Specifically, this comet is not sublimating or melting. They're rock. So this is electrical discharge here and then a plasma discharge here, which is exactly what we can see in this picture. Can you all see the plasma tail here? It's huge. It goes out hundreds of thousands of miles from this comet. And then the dust tail here. So not cryovolcanic. There is no ice on comet 12P Pons Brooks. Mark my words. And if you want to know more about the Electric Comet, the full documentary will be linked below. Earth's core is changing. Little known phenomenon is creating a mysterious new layer. They're claiming that this is because of water from subduction making its way all the way from the top of the Earth all the way down to the outer core. And the water is building up around the outer core, forming a new layer. Yeah. Recent high-pressure experiments reveal a different story. We found that when water reaches the core mantle boundary, it reacts with silicon in the core, forming silica. The outer core's mix of iron and nickel plays a significant role in generating Earth's magnetic field, which essentially protects life on Earth and is weakening. And the paper here will be linked below a hydrogen-enriched layer in the topmost outer core sourced 
from Deeply Subducted Water. It just came out this week. Go get it. Scientists stunned by mysterious structures found in the Milky Way. Here is the paper, The Population of the Galactic Center Filaments. Position, angle distribution reveals a degree scale collimated outflow from Sagittarius A along the galactic plane. This has implications for the electric universe theory, the fact that everything is connected with Birkeland currents, and they've actually visualized Measure between them. five to 10 light years. I have no idea what that means. They're thought to be a few million years old, a bit like myself, and is stunning space watchers. An international team of astrophysicists has discovered hundreds of mysterious structures at the heart of the Milky Way. The so-called filaments are made up of luminous gas and measure between five to 10 light years. I have no idea what that means. They're thought to be a few million years old. How could someone like myself, and being were a reporter by not know what five between... to ten light years means? Absolutely spectacular. The paper, the article, the video, all will be linked below. This is basically what we are witnessing is the proving of electric universe or plasma universe theory before our very lives. And that's good news because the paradigm needs to shift. Sumerian sacred code reveals building instructions echoed in the Bible. This is spectacular. A Sumerian sacred code has been deciphered, revealing divinely inspired building instructions echoed in the Bible. Experts have been puzzled since unearthing the 4,000-year-old statue of a leader called Gudea, which features an architectural plan and inscription claiming he built the temple commanded to him in a dream and a ruler of undeciphered measurements. British Museum archaeologists have now cracked the sacred code of these mysterious measurements after finding a lost temple in Iraq, which they have established to be the divinely mandated holy site mapped out by Gudea's plan. Absolutely fantastic. This type of information gives more credence to the Yuga cycles and the fact that in antiquity, we were much more... Uh, enlightened, even smarter than we are today. Now, you might have remembered this story from a few months back. A meteorite struck a woman in France. Well, guess what? It was a hoax. Just a regular earth rock, maybe a neighbor threw over the roof that hit the roof and then hit her chest. Not a meteorite, which we all probably thought was the case. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video as we are shadow banned. We need your help to grow. I hope you all have a safe travel week, getting to your destinations and spending time with your family. It's the most important thing you can do. Be safe. We love you. And that is a boom. Yeah.